All right, we're going to look at physics in Game Maker Studio 2. I have started out with making four sprites. I created one that's a ball or a sphere. I created one that I called the floor, which is basically just a small rectangle we're going to use for the floor. I created a triangle we call shape one, and I created a square we call shape two. I have also created a room that is basically a, just a black background. I have not created the objects to use the sprites with yet. So the first thing that we're going to do when we get into physics is I have the room open and we're going to come down to the room settings in the lower left hand corner and if you'll scroll down to the very bottom you'll see room physics. We're going to expand that out and we're going to click this enable physics. If we don't do that, then when we add physics to the objects, you could get errors and it's just not going to work correctly. We have to tell the room that it's a physics room. So now, if you look down below that, you'll see where it says gravity X and gravity Y. And to use these, we need to understand the coordinate system of GameMaker and we need to understand how game makers calculating the gravity. So to start with, let's look at how game maker does its coordinate system. So you may remember from math class the coordinate system looking like this. And the coordinate system started with zero in the center. And the horizontal line is the x-axis, the vertical line is the y-axis, and from that point, that center point here, 0, 0, if you went to the right, your x would increase. If you went to the left, the x would decrease. If you went up, your y would increase. If you went down, your y would decrease. In GameMaker, it's a little bit different. GameMaker starts with the 0, 0 point in the upper left-hand corner. So in GameMaker, if we were to draw a yellow dot on this point, x would equal 0 and y would equal 0. The way we would write that would be 0, 0. As x increases, it moves to the right. So if x is at this point, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, if x moved to the right, it would increase. If x moved to the left, it would decrease. So if our x was 4 and our player moved to the left, the x would decrease by 1. If the player moved to the right, the x would increase by 1. Same thing with the y. At this point, the y is 0. If the player moved down, the y would increase. If the player moved back up, the y would decrease. Now, that's a ba very basic coordinate system of GameMaker, and it's important to understand that to understand the next topic which is vectors. Gravity is calculated using vectors in GameMaker and in a lot of other game engines. And what a vector is, is basically part of linear algebra and their sets of coordinates of varying dimensions or like a directed quantity. Now what does all that mean? It basically means that it looks at how the player or the objects are moving and it gives us a way to do some calculations with these movements. Now just to keep this simple, we're just going to talk about really quick two of these dimensions. It's a, a one-dimensional vector and a two-dimensional vector. Now a one-dimensional vector is going to be moving from left to right or moving from right to left and it's going to be in a straight line 
according to this graph here. So let's draw that out real quick. So if we draw a line from x0, y2 to x5, y2, we drew a straight line moving from left to right. So our vector for this line is 5 because we moved 5 places to the right. So if we drew another line starting where we left off, and this time we moved 3 places, that vector would be 3. So if our character started here at our 0, 2 point and moved to the right until it stopped here, it moved for a vector of 5. If it then continued to this point, it moved a vector of 3. We can add those together, so if our player moved from here all the way to here, we just simply add those together, and we know that 5 plus 3 is 8, so if the character moved from here to here, it moved a, a vector of 8. Now, a couple other things about this one-dimensional array. The player doesn't always move from left to right. Sometimes it moves from right to left. In that case, we're talking about subtracting numbers. And the other thing to remember is, is that the player doesn't always move from zero. Sometimes the player can move from a starting point that's inside of this grid somewhere. So let's look at those examples. So in this example, we started at 3, 4, and we moved to 8, 4, so that we can see our vector is 5. Another way we can do this calculation is if we subtract this x value, that will give us our number. If we flip our direction around and we start from 8, 4, and we move to 3, 4, then we have a vector of negative 5 because we're moving from right to left. So basically we've set this up to show you that a one-dimensional vector is basically just counting the positions from left to right, right to left, up to down, down to up, that a player moves or an object moves in the game. So things get a little bit more complicated when we talk about two-dimensional vectors. Now with a two-dimensional vector, we are no longer traveling exactly left to right, right to left, up, down, or down, up. We're moving at diagonals. So when we were looking at one-dimensional vectors, we ended up with one number. You move to the right by 5, or you move to the left by negative 3. With a two-dimensional vector, we're going to end up with two numbers. We need to know how much it moved on the x scale, and we need to know how much it moved on the y scale. So we'll look at starting with our start point, which is right up here at 0, 0. So we started at 0, 0. We ended up at 6, 7. Our formula for calculating our movement is x2 minus x1, so x2 would be 6, that's where we ended up, x1 where we started would be 0, y2 where we ended up would be 7, and y1 where we started would be 0. So by doing a little math, 6 minus 0 is 6, 7 minus 0 is 7, so our two-dimensional vector for this movement would be 6, 7. So now that we know how GameMaker is calculating our gravity, we know that we want the gravity 
to occur down so that we're only going to set gravity on the y-axis and we'll leave it as the default 10. We're going to go ahead and set up a few other things like our objects. So I'm going to create objects out of my sprites. And the first one we're going to create is our floor object. And we are going to leave that alone right now. We'll go ahead and select another object. And we're going to create a ball object. Now, with our ball object, we want to click on uses physics because the ball uses physics. And then if we click right down here on physics, we get some other properties. We're going to leave those the way they are right now. And we'll go back to our room. And we're going to add our floor object into our room. We want to add the ball object into our room. And I'm going to go ahead and play this just to show you what's going to happen. It's not going to work yet. So we get this error, too few vertices in polygon shape fixture. The way we fix that is we go back up to our floor and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add physics to that. We're going to click on this modify collision shape and you can see the square is not touching the floor and that's the issue is that there's no pixels inside of that square. So GameMaker doesn't know how to, to work with that. So what we need to do is grab that square. And we need to line that up with our floor. We'll go ahead and replay it and make sure that we've taken care of that. So now we have the same issue with the ball. And this one, you see the square is inside the ball. It just needs a little bit of tweaking. And that should take care of all of our errors. So now our ball is still falling through our floor. We need to add a few more things. With the floor, because we added physics, we're going to go ahead and add our density to our floor of zero and click on uses physics. What this does is by changing the density to zero, it makes it to where the floor is not going to move, but still will use physics with our ball. We need to add a collision event with our ball. So we'll come down to collision with the ball. We don't have to add any code here at this time. We just have to tell it to look for that collision. Same thing with the ball. We're going to add a collision with the floor. Again, we're not going to add any code in here right now. And we'll click play. We can see that the ball now stops when it collides to the floor, so our physics is working. Now just to make things a little more interesting, let's add another object. We're going to use our triangle object, excuse me, our triangle sprite, and we're going to call that shape one. We're going to add physics to that. We'll add a collision event. Now this time we want to add a collision event with the floor, and we want to add a collision event with the ball. Same thing with our ball. We're going to add a collision event with our shape one or our triangle. And on our floor, we're also going to add a collision event with our triangle. We're going to go to our room. And we're going to add our triangle above our 
all and we'll hit play. So we're getting that same error with our triangle. We're going to go back down to our triangle. We'll modify our collision shape with that. And on this one, we're going to change it from box to a convex shape. And this allows us just to click and create a shape that we want to create that it only gives us the options of a circle and a box. So if we did a box, it would collide just like a box. And because it's a triangle, we want it to have a little bit different collision. We'll hit play. And we can see that our physics work. We're going to go back to our room. I'm going to move our triangle just slightly. And we're going to play that again so that we can see the physics working a little bit better.